Hi, my name is James Tate, uh, Detroit City Council candidate, former second deputy chief of the Detroit Police Department. I recently resigned from the Detroit Police Department in April uh, to run for Detroit City Council because I was embarrassed, I was angered um, by the antics that I saw uh, in the elective body. Uh, and I think that it echoed, my feelings echoed throughout the community. And I felt that it was important for me to step out uh, and do what was necessary to turn the situation around. I feel that uh, my city will never need me more than it needs me right now. Uh, I care about this community. I care about the future of our city. I feel very passionately about the young people in our city. Uh, right now, we're in a situation where we have, we're losing young people two different ways. One, uh, by gunfire and by violence. And the other way, we're losing young people uh, who go to college and they never come back here to the city of Detroit because they said there was no opportunity. Uh, we have to turn the city around uh, to the point where it becomes inviting to people to live, work, and play in the city of Detroit. Uh, we have to start working internally. Uh, work on the families. And I know we can't legislate better family behavior. and We can't legislate behavior. Uh, but I believe that if we don't begin to strengthen our families, we'll never restore our city. Uh, I have worked in an executive capacity uh, in the city of Detroit for five years before I resigned. Uh, prior to that, I worked at Channel 7 News behind the scenes as an assignment desk editor actually earned an Emmy for doing that. Uh, I also, when I was at the city of Detroit, when I worked at the police department, I worked with uh, local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies. So I have those relationships, uh, and I believe that crime is one of the most important things that we have to get a handle on, because if we don't get the handle on the crime in the city of Detroit, uh, we will not be able to uh, invite or induce uh, and bring in new uh, businesses or residents, because that affects uh, the bottom line. It affects our tax revenue, uh, it affects our education, and it all, uh, all around affects the uh, quality of life for the residents of this city. And as a Detroit City Council candidate, I promise to do everything that I can to uh, do uh, the work of the people, put the work of the people before myself. James Tate, Detroit City Council candidate. Well, I live in Northwest Detroit. Uh, in a fairly stable community. Uh, we have people who have been there for a number of years. It's a mixed community, uh, different races. But the issues that we have are similar to the same issues that are found throughout the city. We have uh, break-ins that are taking place throughout the day, and even on Sundays when people are at church. Um, I have done my part in terms of getting other people involved. Uh, I saw about 15 or 16 young men who were walking around just some uh, no sense of direction. So what I did was I got three additional men in the neighborhood. And we sat down with them every Sunday at 4 o'clock and we had meetings with them. Uh, we talked about life. We talked about uh, various issues. We talked about a school, uh, jobs, possibility. And from what we saw from them, we saw the crime went down in our neighborhoods. The break-in stopped. Uh, it didn't stop. It actually slowed down. It didn't stop. But I believe that it... it what, what happened was we had people who got involved, and that's what it's going to take for us to turn the city around. As a Detroit City Council candidate, uh, there are three responsibilities, uh, three charter-mandated powers that I have. And that's to, one, uh, approve the city budget, two, to approve contracts, and three, set laws. But we have enough laws already. Uh, part of what I want to do is, is ensure that we work with the executive branch, the mayor's office, uh, and including the chief police and other law enforcement agencies to enforce the laws that we already have on the books. And that even goes down to the code enforcement. Uh, the budget, I work as hard as I can to decrease that budget by finding additional revenue streams to bring uh, money into the city of Detroit. But when we start talking about the contracts and even the grants, uh, I'll utilize the monies that are uh, available for the city of Detroit that we allow to go back to Washington every year, the millions of dollars, the thousands of dollars, uh, I'll utilize that money back into the neighborhood to try to strengthen our block clubs and even create additional block clubs and even CB radio patrols. We have a thousand fewer officers today than we did just five years ago. And we don't have the money right now to hire a thousand more officers, but the question becomes, now what? Uh, from that point, what we do is we uh, strengthen our neighborhoods, provide people with an opportunity to uh, be the eyes and ears for the police department, but then also be the eyes and ears for their own neighbors. Uh, because we have many neighbors who don't know what their neighborhood looks like when it's good, uh, when things are not going wrong. So it's really hard for us to distinguish 
what it looks like when someone is uh, possibly still in the car, taking some items out of home because they don't know their neighbors. And that's some of the things that I would do to help uh, the neighborhoods in the city of Detroit. I also start with the mentor program. I feel very strongly that you have to provide some guidance with these young people because we have too many people who are afraid to go from their side doors to their car doors. Uh, when we start changing the culture of the city of Detroit, uh, I think at that point, that's when we will begin to turn the corner on the crime issue. As far as it relates to cutting services with the city of Detroit, I think first of all we have to look at the budget and see what we have and look at the departments, look at their individual budgets and see where there are deficiencies and see where the departments have uh, pretty much been bound and tied by the budget that's been put forward. Uh, there are a couple of places that are off limits to me right now. Uh, that is police, well let's just say public safety, police, uh, fire and EMS. I think right now uh, we see in all three areas that uh, both have been cut to the bone and then also through attrition that we've lost a number of different people, a lot of different, a lot of qualified individuals. So now we see a lot of young rookie officers and uh, recruits that are coming in that are backfilling, but we don't have, we're losing that experience. So we have to find a way to also retain those individuals who have that knowledge uh, so that we don't lose that. Um, I also believe that the Water Department, uh, we cannot allow the Water Department to be dismantled and taken away. Uh, that is our most major asset in the city of Detroit. Uh, but when you start talking about salaries, uh, I don't believe that uh, we can, again, just cut our way out of this situation. Uh, we have to look at innovative ways to bring in revenue. One of the things that I would uh, introduce uh, is exploring, exploring uh, leasing the naming rights of some of our public facilities. And that simply means that uh, it's the concept that Tiger Stadium or that the Detroit Tigers have with Comerica Bank. Comerica Bank has placed their name on to Tiger Stadium, what would have been Tiger Stadium, but it's now Comerica Park, uh, for $66 million. Now that money is scot free. Uh, all they have to do is allow the, the bank to place a name on the stadium. And what you have there is $66 million that are going to the Detroit Tigers, and it's not affecting uh, any workers' health care, it's not reducing any workers' jobs, and it's not deteriorating any services because if we continue to cut our services, we're going to continue to degrade the quality of life in the city of Detroit. And I think that the most important thing is that we uh, try to uplift and increase uh, the services that we have. Yeah, I think that uh, an example to use is even Belle Isle. Uh, some people may find it a little bit difficult to call Belle Isle something different than Belle Isle and call it a, by a corporate name. But again, what we're looking at right now is a situation we have to, where we have to be very creative about uh, what we do to bring in revenue. The city of Detroit would, uh, by all means, have the right to refuse the name and approve the name before it comes in because it's all about our image as well. We don't want to just put a name on there. You won't have, in my opinion, a Playboy uh, City Hall or anything like that sponsored by. But we have to look at what are the things that we can do that can bring in, generate money that will... Uh, hurt the least in the city of Detroit. We're even looking at the people mover. It's been called the people mover for years. Now it may be time to introduce another name and also get some money that can be generated by it. 